it's a great honor and a privilege to introduce Sarah Lindstrom from Sweden, who will be talking a little about why she's in Israel and a bit of her background. Sarah, for our listeners out there, it's first of all, welcome to Israel. It's lovely to have a guest from, from Sweden. Which part of Sweden are you from? In the center, maybe we can call it. And um, I have been living there in the countryside in a little bubble <laughs> by myself. And uh, some years ago, I finally got my family together with me, my husband and my children, to go to Israel. And um, that time I met um, Sar El, this organization, and also it was a life-changing um, um, trip for all of our family because uh, until then I was the only one who was really feeling so strongly about Israel and the Jewish people. I could uh, see this during all my life since I was five years old and living up in the far Greenland actually. <laughs> I was, um, we had a neighbor and this neighbor I went to very often because I knew that they played music, Hava Nagila, and I just sat there, five years old, and cried and listened to this music. It was something special in the Hebrew words. And um, Wait, were your neighbors Jewish? I don't know. I don't know and they anything. Do they about sing in Hebrew? They just played it on a gramophone. <laughs> and it was so in Hebrew? You heard it was Hebrew a Hebrew song, yes. And you remember this since you were five? Since last, uh, just, oh. it was so strong. Did you have any Jewish friends growing up? or? No, we were living in Greenland. And when I was t 12 years old, we came back to Sweden. And uh, we started to um, just be normal Swedish people. <laughs> But um, I knew my mother was from Finland. When she was three years old, she got uh, into the rescue plan. And um, she had um, with her the suitcase, uh, the little box <laughs> with her small stuffs. And they brought, the parents brought her two candlesticks signed with the name from the family marine. And that was my uh, grandmother's uh, married name, but her family name, has, her father's name was Timper. Timper is a uh, not so common name in Finland. So, um, and during my upgrow, I have always heard my mother said, I am Jewish, and uh, I didn't. Uh, put so much no, uh, attention to this, but uh, um, the Hebrew always started to move something inside myself. And when I saw the flag, the Israel flag, I started to cry. I wow. love it. I mean, everything who is included with Israel and the Jewish people, it's so strong for me. So I decided when I was young, when I finished school, I had to go to Israel, and that was the first thing I did. I went to a kibbutz, Hama Apil, near Netanya, Hadera, and it was such a wonderful time. And um, You went by yourself, or you went yes, with friends? Yes, I went by myself. And you were accepted well into the kibbutz? Yeah, I was just uh, there for a couple of months. And the, so. the people on the kibbutz, the kibbutznikim, they accepted you yes, well? Yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> so um, I wanted to come back. When I was old, I said to myself... Not old, but a few years later, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I had to wait actually 27 years wow. until next time. And during this time, I was in front of my computer and I was listening to the music and I was dancing by myself in the kitchen when my kids was up going and they could not understand until I took them to Israel. And when I took them to Israel and we came to Jerusalem, 
that was a turning point for them and they saw what I was talking about I love this and now they they uh, knew what I was talking about because they saw how I uh, reacted and they saw also what was inside um, Israel what they not have heard because Sweden is very very much um, the media is not telling so much good about it's very biased very biased yes, against very, Israel very very much yeah. So, um, by coming to Israel, that was a turning point, and now we are, um, all the family, we are very much pro-Israel, <laughs> and um, uh, actually it was six years ago since we first time started to keep Shabbat, because until then, even though my mother always said that she was Jewish, and why I didn't know but um, uh, you know Sweden is um, a kind of Christian country but not anymore actually it's very secular but the Sunday is the resting day so that was what I was up growing with so um, when we came to Israel our family the first time we heard about Shabbat and you, had, you hadn't heard about it before and not like um, really keeping Shabbat so when we came back to Sweden we googled because we had met some people in the, the street in Jerusalem and we talked about this Shabbat and um, they just encouraged us to to start Shabbat so when we came back to Sweden we googled what is Shabbat <laughs> And we found one wonderful teaching in Swedish about Shabbat. And in this program, it would cut off in the half of the program. And we found out that this teaching was so dangerous for this program, uh, the television, that um, the biggest um, donation, um, um, they, the, actually it was a church who phoned uh, the television and said if you are going to send this whole session about Shabbat we will cut off our donation everything and uh, they just started to play music and the half was just out in the space somewhere so we started to look up anything more because it was really what's so dangerous about Shabbat and um, we found something more and I also, I have always read uh, Torah and, and uh, Tanakh and also, of course, since I have been living in a Christian country, also um, the New Bible, uh, the New Testament. So by keeping Shabbat, I really wanted to know about what is this really in the Torah and, and Tanakh. And I found so many things who were so wonderful. Even for me in a um, um, Goy country. <laughs> a non-Jewish country. Yeah. <laughs> but can I just, going back to with, the, with yes. the television program, did they give any reason why they cut off no, the... not at all. No reason whatsoever. No. Do you think so, the, the church was worried that people who would be watching this might say, ask questions why are we celebrating the day of rest on Sunday and not Saturday? Mm. And, and I, I believe that this have been... Um, one of the the most scary reason that they will lose the power about the people inside church because uh, they are kind of hierarchy inside the churches as well and some lies even and now I know because when we started to keep Shabbat it was just um, very very easy M simple I was all by myself and I took actually the two candlesticks from my mother. <laughs> it's interesting that you had two candlesticks. Yes. And I took them and I uh, put on uh, YouTube prayer and I candle the light the and then I just started to cry. It was so strong and I felt like all my life I have been uh, um, I was missing something so strong and that was the first 
the first moment with Shabbat and I felt so like can I say Hashem was very very close to me in this room and I was totally by myself and slowly slowly my uh, process was more and more into Shabbat and our family was a little bit into the ruin actually I was burned out from a lot of pressure from work and economy and whatever we are supposed to do by by keeping everything in Sweden like normal Swedish people so when we decided no we want to do this we want to keep Shabbat we will take one day off and that is the Saturday we started with Friday evening together with family and the next step was I want to be free on Shabbat, um, on the Saturday, Shabbat day. So I did my cooking Friday daytime and we took off. <laughs> we sat in the sofa and the first time we really was enjoying time together. As with a family? Me. Yes. It was before it was just in front of the television together and we had mm -hmm. candies and pizza but but now we could just uh, choose to be together and that was so amazing it was very much different from from the kind of lifestyle in Sweden when someone on the resting day <laughs> like uh, Sunday go to shopping center mm -hmm. or maybe to church to do busy things inside churches so it was really changing wow. yes and did you have any support in in Sweden from any Jewish community or no we are living very far distance from the Jewish community it's from about, Stockholm you quite yes far. it's about uh, 220 kilometers from Stockholm and the closest uh, Jewish um, center maybe I can say there are some also a little closer but not uh, minyan actually <laughs> wow. so and the funny thing is that um, uh, when we started to keep shabbat and we were telling our friends no no we will not do anything on uh, on shabbat they were starting to uh, leave us just because you were keeping yes. shabbat yeah and also we are living in a very that time we were living in a very small uh, town and uh, this churches was um, the the leaders inside the churches they were warning the people for us because we were dangerous for the church and um, they uh, were not so polite but we got new friends <laughs> And how did your, your immediate family react? Your family and your close uh, family, they, they were supportive? Some of them, they just turned the back. And some are just, well, not so curious actually, because we are living a little distance from the rest of our families. So they are not so really into this. They are, maybe they are just thinking that we are a little crazy. <laughs> wow, and your, your, your children and your husband, they were very supportive? Yes, in that moment, really. So this, the only person who really understand me is my mother. <laughs> wow. And, um, yeah. That's amazing. And, okay, wow, well, now that you've discovered Shabbat, which is quite, um, um, it's very special, it's amazing. I mean, mm. Shabbat, they say more has Shabbat kept the Jewish people than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat. Mm. It's because of Shabbat that um, it's the focal point of uh, the Jewish people and keeping the Jewish family and it's really, it's well one of the Ten Commandments. It's, mm. it's, it's a pivotal it part of, of Judaism. Mm. Are you looking into any other aspects of Judaism or you... Maybe your original Jewish roots, maybe you, you halakhically, that's uh, maybe you are actually, maybe you are actually Jewish and 
your soul uh, is coming back. It's returning home. <laughs> I is... had some friends who always used to say now that I have a Jewish soul mm -hmm. and I don't know really what they are meaning, but I know one thing now because my daughter, she's very much, um, actually all my kids, they really want to, to stay in Israel and, and me too. I always cry when I have to go back. So uh, my daughter, she wanted to do DNA and uh, I don't know about DNA because uh, it's, it's so many strange yeah. uh, things we can't understand if nobody's teaching us. But she finally, she did her DNA test and uh, the exact matches who came up, it was uh, two exact matches from uh, Ashkenazi and one from Sephardi. Wow. So, and what to do with this, I don't know, but I had some very interesting um, uh, email contact and I sent my just question to these persons and told that I wanted to know if if there is some connection with my identity, our identity and uh, Israel and the Jewish people. So one person who sent me an answer, she also sent uh, some of her ancestry with photos and uh, four generations back. She told me that she, the ancestor, was a wonderful Jewish lady. So there is some connection, but it can't help me to move to Israel, what I really, really want. And especially now when the situation is in Sweden, very hard. <laughs> it must be hard because you yes. see a lot of Tremendous negativity coming mm -hmm. from, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, from the Swedish government. Yeah. Uh, very, very biased against Israel, uh, it, mm -hmm. to the extreme. Yeah. And it's 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 very sad because um, Sweden, Finland, and Norway during the war, with Denmark, helped a lot of Jewish people, and um, and now we see, specifically with Sweden, it's it's kind of the reverse. Yeah. It is, and have been also hidden for a long time. But now, uh, during this this um, last years, with the government and Margot Wallström and every you know everything, what they decided, they it had been so much much stronger now the anti-Semitism and and uh, what to say and what to not say. So um, it really hurt when I hear everything, what's happening. So can I ask, if, if you speak about, or if you're speaking with friends and the topic of, of Israel comes up, mm -hmm. and you mention that you are pro-Israel, how do your friends or the community you're living in, how do they react when you say, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-Israel or I'm pro-Jewish? Have you had any bad reaction or has it been a positive reaction? A lot of um, positive reaction because now I have new friends. <laughs> mm. But to tell you the truth, also a lot of negative reaction. I would tell you one thing who happened just um, one year ago when my son, he was um, uh, painting and uh, David Starr on the car, on the front of the car of his friend, because he also wanted to have this uh, David Starr, blue and white, and um, they came into a pizzeria, and uh, the owner there in our town, he was just looking out on the parking car, and when they came in, they asked, are you the owner of this car? And they, the friend said, yes, I am. Oh, lucky for you, because I know you and I will never hit you, but I saw the car and I hate that wow. sign. 
and because my son and his friend they are very much pro-Israel they also uh, in a little town the, the news always goes very quick so one day it was exactly the first day of Hanukkah last year when someone uh, of um, he just knew by name actually this is a long longer story now but I want to tell it because it's so hard and uh, he was driving his car and he saw this this man he knew by name and the man also knew that my son was pro-Israel and my son he saw that the man was driving drunk very drunk so when he um, talked to him tried to talk to him don't drive like this it's very dangerous he started to uh, smash him and hit him and then um, since my son had uh, practiced a little, little Krav Maga he was he, he just ran away but the man shouted to him I will hit you and now you will see what will happen so when he came to his home his whole flat was smashed the, all the windows and that was not so nice experience for him because you know <laughs> so the police they didn't knew they didn't do anything not at all because what can they do and uh, that was one of the very scary moment for him and uh, for us all because this is a little included in to be pro-Israel and it's more and more and now I know also that uh, if I go up on Facebook openly with my pro-Israel I will have a lot of attacks by normal Swedish uh, actually because they are listening to to the media and and they are changing even the churches the people inside the churches are changing from being pro-Israel now to be very pro-Palestinian and this is so scary because I have tried some years now to get um, the school books into Sweden the Palestinian school books you know because it's very much included with the terror and jihad and shall not be paid off by Sweden government and uh, the people who really want to be pro-Israel they shall not give one Swedish crown to this because it's jihad and it's very very bad so uh, during this time I have noticed that the churches they don't want to listen they don't want to be pro uh, into politic and they tell me the leaders I have been talking to that they only bless Israel uh, spiritually and we can do that we have to stand up for Israel and I am I am doing this in all way I can figure out I am a uh, salesman for Israel product and I tell all my friends use this because they have uh, taken it from the the shops in Sweden we can't find it anymore the best product in the world the skin product and everything it's gone and uh, when I try to to get this into the churches or the schools or everywhere where I can can tell it they just don't want to listen because the media is telling that Israel is the bad boy yeah. and um, it really have to change so until now I do my best to be like a watchman and I tell what I see and what I believe is the best to do to stand with Israel but the scary thing is that I know my government will not protect me from the Islamization and the, they will not protect me from the hate and they will not give me a rescue um, place in Sweden and Israel 
I don't know. Until now, I don't have my document. I don't know if I am Jewish or if it's just a Jewish soul who is longing to come back. <laughs> so there are many, there are many people here in Israel you can speak to mm -hmm. about um, about what Judaism is all about. What's very interesting about Judaism is that it's not a missionizing religion. It never has been, mm -hmm. and um, Judaism. I'll just mention, Judaism is the one religion that believes that all righteous people have a place with God and um, and and it's, it's quite a unique thing that you don't have to be Jewish to go to God or God listens mm. to everybody and um, yeah. and that is a, quite a unique thing because if you take all other religions, only if you believe in that religion do you have a place with God or uh, in paradise, but in Judaism all people, all good Righteous people from all religions, have, we believe, have a place with, with, with Hashem, with God. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know more about Judaism, and because um, Shabbat is a major part of Judaism, but there are many, many aspects of Judaism which is it's so enriching and it's so um, and it's open there. There are many people that you can speak to, many books that you can read, and uh, and just to get closer, you have this. You can see you done a big sacrifice to be not only pro pro Israel but you it's it seems that your neshama your soul is thirsting for for the truth and um, you know we living in an area that that is not a simple the Middle East is not a simple place but this is where God promised that Jewish people will return to mm -hmm. and we've seen tremendous miracles today mm -hmm. and we are returning and our blessing to you really is that uh, you should have all of Hashem, all of God's blessings, and just as the the light of the candles that you lit on that Friday night, that Shabbat, so a candle is very significant and a light is extremely significant in Judaism. You begin the Shabbat with a light and you go out in Havdalah mm -hmm. with a light as well. Mm -hmm. But the light can have a very small little flame and can be in a very dark area. But even a small flame can illuminate, and the truth, and we believe that what you know, the, the Torah is the truth, and um, what what Hashem, what God has said, is is the truth, and He promised us this land and um, to be an eternal blessing, and if you if you stay with the truth, like you have, even that small flicker, that small little spark that you lit, can illuminate and can. It can be absorbed in a lot of darkness, and that's what you are actually doing in in Sweden. You are mm. showing the truth about Israel and the truth about just because you keep Shabbat, which God had commanded, it's one of the Ten Commandments, mm. that people should dislike you. It's incredible, but you are you are carrying that little flame, and and you don't know who you might influence, and you, but just by you carrying that flame, it is so important. And we're so proud of you. It's amazing. And speaking to you, it's been for me very, I don't want to use the part, illuminating, but it's been it's been so special already. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. And our listeners out there will also very appreciate what you do. And we just commend you and you and your family that you should continue in your amazing work just to strive for the truth. And the truth is there. It, it's emet, the word emet in Hebrew. I don't know if, you know, if you've learned Hebrew. A so bit. The very first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph. Mm -hmm. The middle is mem and the end is tough and that's what it met is. It's it's a three. It stands it's very stands very stable. Mm -hmm. That's what it met is, it's the truth. And uh, may you continue to to strive for the truth and to be that bearer of that flame of the truth. Yeah, I know. And but the truth you. can be very hard to to uh, to carry actually because from Shabbat we uh, we change everything. We don't celebrate Christmas, and we don't celebrate Easter, and we don't celebrate Halloween, and we keep the what I can see in Torah, what is Hashem's really important will. Uh, so uh, that can be very, uh, it's a feeling like uh, in Sweden, very lonely. and. Um, it's a suffer actually, but uh, when we are doing this with the family in, and with our friends, it's a stronghold. It's so 
it's just such a blessing. <laughs> and what what can uh, be a little uh, hurting actually when I came here to to Israel to Jerusalem um, just a few days ago, and from Sweden with all the Christmas things now. Uh, it's really for me it's disgusting because now I know uh, it's built on lies actually and I saw also in Jerusalem some or influence about this Christmas and this thing so that's that's a little pity for me to see <laughs> a sorrow okay, cause because there are, there are quite a few tourists in yeah. the country wants to it's a democratic country, so mm. they, they know that everybody has to has the freedom to choose. Mm. But um, don't worry, it's there's so many things that you, so many good things here that you we have to put in the right direction. But they really are, and we we just hope that your stay here will be so positive, and that you'll take back so much from this country, and that you'll come visit much more. And then please God live here eventually, and. Um, to strengthen your belief in, in the true Hashem and what He wants. Yes. And we hope your journey towards going to the truth will just will be an easy journey and a rewarding one for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And we just wish you, it's called Muzzle and Brocha, all the success and all the Muzzle, it's hard to translate, but just it's more than luck. It's just you need all of God's blessings in that luck. Mm -hmm. So thank you so, so much. Mm. I really appreciate it and so will our listeners.